Why, hello there! Today, we're going to jump balls deep into that class you've been asking for, this priest day! Hello! What's going on, guys? It's Preachy! And today we're going to look at one of the more interesting classes that have come out of World of Warcraft since about TBC time. And that is the Discipline Priest. Back in the day, Discipline Priest was all about the PvP, baby, smashing people up in that face. Not these days, though. Since about T late TBC, Wrath of the Lich King time, Discipline Priest has actually come into its own as its own standalone worthwhile, valuable addition to the raid, where it can be very difficult to understand what our strengths and weaknesses are. Why? Because we base a lot of our stuff on this channel in the looking for raid environment, where the majority of the player base is. That's where they are. And when we're in the looking for raid environment, we don't see the results we might expect. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about your strength and your weaknesses. We're going to get right into that, guys, because the Discipline Priest is a ton of fun. And once you know the strength and weaknesses, you'll feel very confident that you are an absolute asset ball of bro fist to that raid, okay? As you can see, this video looks like it's on the old setup, and we've moved if you've been following the live web show. That's because it's pre-filmed. So if you requested anything after that, fortunately, it's not going to happen until the next new setup arrives. This is one of the last videos I'm filming, guys, okay? So say bye-bye to this setup and this weak ass green screen. Probably got a nice green aura around me. Say goodbye to that. Boom! This priest. <clears throat> Why do we not understand the results when we go into looking for raid and test it out? Why? Because the looking for raid healers in general are really, really bad. <laughs> I don't like usually saying that term, but they're really sort of... Holy cow, if you did that in a progression raid, you would get your ass spanked left and right. What am I talking about? I'm talking about meter whoring. Looking for raid healers in general, from when I've been in there, and I've been in many, many times, guys, as you know, gearing up those 31 specs for you ballers, I've been in looking for raid constantly, and when I'm in there, I notice many things that I just think, you are crazy. I've noticed a guy taking one damage, just a tank taking damage, and a healing raindrop on him. What the hell? <laughs> That's like 60k mana. But one guy taking about 10k damage, you're mad. What happens a lot in looking for raid, guys, is the seriously big AoE healers always win. Why? Meter cheesy. Dropping things like Healy Rain, Holy Word Sanctuary from your Holy Priest, or Holy Radiance from your Holy Paladins. Every time someone takes a minuscule amount of damage, they're always healing it up. And what you'll generally find is on a fight like that's longer, Madness of Deathwing always springs to mind, is by the time we get to that fourth platform, the healers are out of mana. Why? Because they were just spamming ridiculous heals all the time. The first thing we need to do with our Dis Priest is say he is his own class. He is not a Holy Priest with slightly more powerful shields. This is the first thing people ask me about is Preach. The Holy Priests are smoking me. Absolutely smoking me. Why, why would you recommend Dis to me? You say Dis is so fun. You say Dis is so cool. So what the hell am I supposed to do, Preach? Because the Holy Priests are just wiping the floor with me. We have to understand what our Dis Priest is all about. A Holy Priest thrives on damage taken. A Holy Priest loves it when a raid takes a ton of damage. Why? Circle of Healing, Prayer of Healing with a huge hot, and also Prayer of Mending ticking like an absolute boss. Adding Power Word Sanctuary, that is a ton of AoE healing we don't have access to. Does that mean we're worse? Absolutely not. We work in a different way. We're a totally different class. We're as separate as a Resto Shaman to an Elemental Shaman. We are just different. We have our own dedicated talent tree. Discipline isn't about taking one or two points from Holy and adding it into the other Discipline tree to go maybe some Tier 2 of the talents. Absolutely not. We are our own fully-fledged tree. And the first thing we need to do is understand how our spells work, how they interact together, and what our main goal is as a Discipline Priest. What our main function is, guys, what our job is, is to prevent damage. That's what we do. Disciplined priests prevent damage. Holy priests are brilliant at soaking up and healing up damage that's been taken. Disciplined priests reduce the damage taken by the raid by an obscene amount. We have Divine Agents, we've got Bubble, we've got Power Word Barrier, quite literally the most powerful raid cooldown in the whole game. Really is, it's better than Spirit Link. Kind of, depending on the fight. There's an argument there for sure. But Power Word Barrier is definitely so awesome, guys. And in fact, Every heroic progression guild will be taking Dis Priest by the plenty. They love them. You'll generally have a Dis Priest and a Holy Priest because they both work side by side as a really cohesive unit. That's what I like about them, okay? 
Now we're going to be talking from the, the aspects of an atonement discipline priest that does a lot of damage as well. Not like we're not going to be topping meters on the damage, but we're certainly going to be providing some extra DPS support to that raid. And when it comes to a heroic progression raid, where every bit of DPS counts to get that brand new boss down that might be on a really tight timer, discipline priest really helps to shine out there and also cheese some mechanics. Discipline priests have traditionally been able to cheese certain mechanics in certain fights that other healers just could not cope with. Leech King Heroic always springs to mind here with a lovely little spell called Infest that the boss used to cast on the raid. A disciplined priest could shield the entire raid and every time Infest was kicked out it instantly disappeared. Infest works that if your health was full the debuff would disappear. But if your health wasn't full, the debuff, the dot, would get gradually stronger. Discipline Priest would shield the raid, so when they took the infest damage, they wouldn't take any damage, instantly clearing it. And that still applies today in certain encounters. Think about your size the Unsleeping. A raid where if the Shadow Globule gets in and starts putting debuffs on everybody so they can't be healed, Discipline Priest starts to shine that little bit more. Why? Because we're preventing damage. We're not healing damage, we're preventing damage. That's what we're about. What it also means, guys, is Disciplined Priests are more responsible for learning the fights than every other healer. Pretty much, we need to know what's going to happen next. Not what's happened now, so we can heal it up. What's happening next and what can we do about that? So let's talk about our spells individually and how they work together to form a nice synergy of their own. We're going to start with Penance. Penance seems to be the big go-to healer for Disciplined Priests. However, look how much Penance heals for. It's not a great amount. really isn't. What is the best use of Penance? Penance is super fast. It heals in three charges, so instead of waiting for a cast of a heal, we start healing straight away. That makes it immediately brilliant for when someone gets knocked down to way low health. What we do, could work in partnership with the rest of the healers, is we Penance that mofo while the other guys are casting a heal to land with him. That's going to keep him alive for those few seconds while the other guys get in charge, take over and do the actual healing. Penance also stacks Grace, which increases the amount of healing that guy takes. By doing Penance, we get to three stacks of Grace instantaneously, meaning our big heal, which is usually the greater heal. We tend not to use heal or flash heal. We tend to really prefer greater heal if we can and really look after our mana. Discipline Priests are hugely mana efficient. Bear that in mind, guys. We'll get back to it shortly. So, Penance is go-to heal that's immediate, super fast. You think you might compare it to a Holy Shock, but Holy Shock is one charge. It heals and then he has to cast something. Penance is heal, heal, heal then a big heal from somebody else, you just rescued that guy's life, guys. That's your immediate go-to thing for Penance. What I don't want you to think of Penance as is this huge, big, super mega heal. It isn't. It's good for getting Grace up, it's good for getting a Divine Aegis on the go, so he's got a little bit of protection from one of your bubbles, and now he's ready for his big heal from somebody else in the raid. Let them do that. Your job with Penance is to either stack Grace up for a big heal, or to save somebody's ass in a last minute situation. Awesome, good. Let's move on to Bubble, our shield. Our, th our usual go-to spell, especially before Cataclysm, Shield was a huge spell. We could spam it raid-wide and through Rapture, get all our mana back nice and tidy so we could go sort of Arthur, and then we'd be full of mana. They changed that, okay? Rapture is only going to proc on a certain amount of cooldowns. And Divine, uh, the Shield is actually hugely expensive. Really, really expensive. To the point where, realistically, we want to cast it on one person. Now in Dragon Soul, there are very few fights where there's two people taking direct damage on a regular basis. There might be AoE damage, of course, there's loads of AoE damage. We've proved that in Looking for Raid, with all the healers spamming AoE heals constantly and cheesing the meters, that that does occur. But there's only usually one tank who's taking re reliable, regular incoming damage. So what I want you to do, guys, is focus him. Put him on your focus bar so you can track Weakened Soul. Or make sure Weakened Soul is on your grid as a nice little icon, so you can see when Weakened Soul runs out. If you're casting that one shield and the guy taking the regular incoming damage, on cooldown, the second Weakened Soul runs out, you're applying a new shield. One, it's a super powerful shield thanks to all your mastery. Remember, Disciplined Priests aren't going for like big haste or anything like that. We balance our stats and generally push it towards mastery for big, super big, powerful shields. We're stacking that shield on, he's going to absorb a ton of damage. A ton of damage from a big, powerful shield. And then we're going to get a load of mana back for casting it so it doesn't really affect us. Really nice, guys. So we're going to keep that on the tank all the time. We're also going to keep using our Prayer of Mending. Why? It's super cheap and it heals for loads. Especially if there's AoE damage going on, you want to keep that Prayer of Mending on cooldown constantly. Boom, 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 boom. But we'll get to AoE healing in a little while. What else I want to talk to you about is how you do your DPS. Let's talk about our single target healing for now. 
Atonement priests, when they first get into it, are so used to the natural catalogue of healing style, which is people take damage, I heal it, that they tend not to be as active when they jump into the disciplined priests. Not so. A disciplined priest should always be casting guys. Always. Why? Because our DPS spells, Holy Fire and Smite, barely cost anything when we start stacking our evangelism up. And then we can pop that cooldown as soon as we get to five seconds. We also get a ton of mana back and it buffs our healing even more. Keeping the evangelism buff on yourself is super important, guys. Really good. Track it nicely and make sure you're using it all the time. So it's a really big boost to your healing. Really important. So as soon as the fight starts, we should be DPSing. We are not waiting for damage. We are DPSing, and that's throwing out heals on the smartest person next to you. By smartest, I don't mean the most intelligent, and it's a smart heal. It's looking for the guys who need that heal the most. And we could just keep popping that out. You literally, you'll find as soon as the tank takes a little bit of damage, your heal lands straight on him straight away. Faster than any healer could cast on him. Why? Because we're already casting. We are just spamming our DPS into the boss, popping our evangelism, and our mana bar isn't going hardly anywhere. We've also got a shield on him, so he's prevented taking a lot of damage. Awesome. So what I really recommend to you guys is don't wait for damage on a Discipline Priest. This applies to five mans, raids, whatever. It doesn't matter. Start DPSing from the start. You should be DPSing with the DPSs. And then you switch to other spells as and when. You want to be firing off your Holy Fire, Smite, 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 Evangelism, while keeping your shield on the tank and watch for tank switches and get a new shield on them. Often when tanks switch target or taunt and the healers aren't quite ready, they're casting on the wrong tank. You need to be ready for that. Just look at grid, look at whatever you've got to see who is being targeted, get a shield on them straight away. That allows the rest of the healers to catch up nicely. You be that ball. You be the guy that prevents that guy taunting and getting gibbed because the healers are healing the wrong person. You have that power as a discipline priest to buy everybody else some time to readjust to what's going on. Just by watching who has aggro, it takes you less than a cast just to get off that shield and really help out the raid. Fire off a prayer mending as well. As soon as your shield goes, it's going to get that prayer mending heal all nice. Maybe fire off a penance as well. Just get him nice and ready and then continue your DPS. Always be casting, guys. Don't wait for damage. You're always casting all the damn time. You can keep your mana up so easily as a Discipline Priest. These spells are so cheap once you start getting your Evangelism that your mana bar will barely go anywhere. You're mixing your mana him, your Shadow Fiend, you're good, you're golden. You can really just keep healing for a long time. The other heals will go oom way before you do. Generally, remember some classes are, more, are very mana efficient as well. We look at a Resto Shaman, they barely go out. But in terms of a Disc Priest, you're really going to just keep going and going and going. You're the Duracell battery, baby. You are rocking and rolling. Good. Now the next big thing I get asked is about AOE damage. Preachy, what the hell do I do when everybody's taking damage? What do I do? First of all, you ask yourself, is this AOE damage something I should be using my barrier on? Ask the other healers, if you're in a progression raid, when do you want my barrier? I can use it twice in this fight, so give me a time. Should I go first and then third? Should I go first and fourth? Should I go second and fourth? Find out when you need it. If you know big incoming damage is coming, as a disciplined priest, you have the power that the other healers do not have to prevent that damage from kicking anybody's ass. That's your power, guys. Use it. Use it wisely. Think about, let's put it in looking for raid terms. Warmaster Blackhorn, when he casts an onslaught, everybody runs into the big purple thing. Get your barrier down. Nobody's going to take any damage. That is more vital than casting a ton of prayer healings that heal for a shitload. It's all about preventing damage, guys. You should always be casting, and you should be more aware than the other healers of when crap is about to go down so you can do something about it before it happens. Prevent that damage from killing people, guys. If it's dangerous, you can sort it out. You have the tools to do it. So important. AoE healing. Everybody's taking damage. What do we do? Simple, guys. We use the tools we have. Just because they're not as powerful as a Holy Priest, we're still going to be casting that Prayer of Healing. That's going to be proccing shields on everybody as well. So while people are getting your Prayer of Healing and they're getting hots and all sorts of stuff from everyone else, they're still getting shields so they're absorbing damage before that healing needs to take an effect. So the raid doesn't keep dropping its health like that, it'll stop and maybe even go up a bit before it starts going down. Thanks to your Divine Aegis and your Prayer of Healing. Now remember, these shields are going to proc on everybody, so start throwing your prayer of healing on one group, then another, then another, then maybe back to the other group to get those shields back up. If they need the healing, do that. And keep your prayer of mending on cooldown, as well as using your shield on a reasonably regular basis to make sure you can get Rapture back to get your mana back in tow. Really easy, guys. You're not a Holy Priest. You're not designed to heal tons of damage. You're designed to prevent a ton of damage. So important, guys. I really want you to get used to that, okay? Get used to that idea in your head and always be casting. Always be doing something in Discipline Priest. We're out to top the meters. That's not our job. Our job is to save people. Our pain suppression 
Our goddamn barrier are so good, guys. Every time a tank is in a serious situation, pain suppression of 50% reduced damage, or whenever the tank calls for it, is so much better than a Guardian Spirit or anything like that. You can save some serious lives, guys. That's why all these people are bringing them. Look at yourself. Do you think the top end guilds are bringing Disc Priests when Holy's better? Absolutely not. They take what's the best and they always bring Disc Priests because they're so cool. Especially for the barrier, especially for shields, and especially for the fact that they set the other he healers up to do some solid life saving moments, guys. And our Disc Priest does them constantly. Really enjoy your role, guys, okay? Really enjoy it. Take it to heart. Understand your role and start learning some raid mechanics of how you can possibly intercede and make things better for yourself. You take it easy, guys. I'll hope to see you in the new set very, very shortly. Stay balling.